The Krishna Consciousness Movement welcomed one of its world leaders during the week. He is His Divine Grace Bhavanandi Goswami Vishnupada, formerly movie producer Charles Backus of New York City. Bhavanandi Goswami manages the Society's Eastern World Headquarters in Mayapur, India. He visited his local followers at the Krishna farm in Huapai near Auckland. Probably few people here know much about the Krishnas, except that devotees chant and dance in the streets. Brent Leslie asked his divine grace what the chanting achieves. Chanting of Hare Krishna is a way of glorifying God. <clears throat> Krishna is the name of God. And our mission is to uh, remind the people of the world that God exists and that God is a person, He has senses, He is the supreme, transcendental, spiritual person, and His name is Krishna. Does that correspond in any way to the Christian ideal of prayer? Yes, this is a form of prayer. It's also a form of meditation. And it corresponds to the Christian teachings that you should glorify God. You should glorify God in the Bible. It says you should glorify God with with bells and drums, we're doing that. Some people say, in fact, it uh, causes a form of hypnosis. If this is a, a form of hypnosis which helps you develop love for God, then that's good. What is the relationship between Christianity and Krishna consciousness? For instance, how do you regard Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Christianity is a partial teaching of the teaching of Krishna consciousness. The basic tenet of every religion is the same, that you should love God with all your heart and soul. That is the teaching of Jesus. First commandment, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. And Krishna consciousness is a process of how to develop that love for God. How do you account for the popularity of uh, Krishna among young people here? It seems to be gathering strength. We're gathering strength not only here in New Zealand, but all over the world, because we have the answers to the questions that the young people are asking. This materialistic culture is leaving them completely vacant, completely frustrated, completely in anxiety, and they're none of the religious uh, organizations are giving them the answers. The answer that any intelligent person will ask is, who am I? And why am I suffering? This is an intelligent man. When you come to the point of asking, who am I? Why am I suffering? What is this material world made up of? And who is God? At that point, you will be brought to the Krishna Consciousness Movement. And the Krishna Consciousness Movement answers these questions completely Krishna consciousness had its origins in India. In fact, it was 5,000 years ago when Lord Krishna was on earth. Yet India, more than any country, seemed to have problems of poverty and illiteracy. Yes, India has some problem with poverty, but not everyone in India is poor. Not everyone in India is starving. As a matter of fact, I live in India, and I've never seen, I travel all over India, I've never seen one person starving. But I've seen people starving in New York City, I've seen people starving in London, I've seen people starving all over the world. So we can't pinpoint India. The point is that everyone in every country of the world is suffering due to an atheistic trend which is among the government leaders. And they have a false sense of proprietorship. Everything that we see belongs to God, belongs to Krishna. But everyone is thinking it belongs to them. Therefore, there must be restriction. God will restrict, and that we're seeing now. Just like they've been using so much of the oil from the earth, thinking that it's theirs. Now there's restriction. Krishna does have Eastern overtones. The fact that you yourself now have an Eastern name doesn't Christianity fulfill exactly the same need? Why the need for an Eastern religion? Uh, religion, God, is not Eastern, he's not Western. Well, an Eastern slant then, perhaps. Because when Krishna comes to this material universe, when God appears, he appears in Brindavan. South of Delhi, there's a town, Brindavan, very beautiful 38 square mile dam. That Dham is not of this material world, just like uh, in the American embassy, 
technically that American embassy in New Zealand is not New Zealand. It's America. And when the president comes to New Zealand, when he's at that embassy, he's in America. Similarly, when Krishna, when God comes to this material universe, he goes to Brindavan. It's not actually of the material world. It is a little piece of the spiritual world where Krishna always appears. The Krishna religion seems very strict morally. Does it have the Christian ideals of helping others? Yes, but we have to understand what is really helping others. To build hospitals is all right, but if you can't cure the problem of the suffering of the soul of the living entity, just fixing the body and then having the person die, because you have to die inevitably, and be, take birth as a dog, then what is the benefit of your hospital? You have to understand what is really helping others. Helping others means to help them not have to take another birth in this material world, but at the moment of death to return back to the spiritual sky, back to God, back to Krishna. So are you actually giving practical help to anyone in the world? And you should understand, this is the most practical help. But also we have in India and in Africa our ISKCON food relief we distribute in our city, we are building a city for 50,000 people just north of Calcutta in West Bengal and we feed hundreds of thousands of people every week. There seems to be literally thousands of gurus in the world today. How can anyone tell who has true knowledge and who hasn't? You have to recognize not by seeing but you recognize a bona fide guru by hearing. A bona fide guru is one who can deliver you to God and you can tell one who can deliver you to God by whether he is in love with God and the symptoms are that he only talks of God, he only thinks of God, and he only acts for God. He has no other interest in this world. He only thinks how I can spread Krishna consciousness to save the suffering conditioned souls who are Krishna's parts and parcels. How he can speak about Krishna, only Krishna, never any nonsense talk, just only about Krishna. And acting, using his body, only in the service of Krishna. This is the uh, qualification of bona fide guru. There are so many other people claiming to be guru, but they don't have the qualification to be guru. Actually, they're dogs. Bhavanandi Goswami also has definite views on the drug problem and the treatment of drug dealers. Any man who's dealing in heroin, all these drugs, you shoot them in the head. Not the drug users because they're being exploited, but the dealers, you shoot them in the head. You give them a chance, are you going to stop this? <laughs> we find you again, shoot you in the head, that's all. <laughs> Bhavananda Goswami. Next week we'll look at the church's role in the resettlement of Indochina's refugees.